Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Please subscribe guys, it really does help with the algorithm and uh, a thumbs up never hurts as well. I wanted to start this off guys with uh, Matthew LINY's tweet here, Coinbase changing the status of XRP. Now a lot of people uh, who use Coinbase are noticing some changes on the platform here, uh, trading not yet available. Apparently, I mean, I don't use Coinbase personally, but apparently this uh, this wording was different before. So uh, Michael Skarn down here saying trading not supported is the same as trading not yet available. However, uh, not supported makes it sound like uh, Coinbase is not uh, even entertaining the idea of uh, allowing XRP trading on the platform. Uh, yet, when it says not yet available, that insinuates that uh, the XRP cryptocurrency will be available at some time in the future. So, Matthew LINY uh, also mentioning, sure, but the actual language on my app changed. So, uh, he is noticing the changes on his app. Also, it's referred to as Ripple in the wallet transaction history. This coming from Stranger Digital here on Twitter. Uh, so, he's uh, just showing us here, bought, sent, Ripple, bought, sent, Ripple. So, for whatever reason, they, uh, they changed the name on the app. I'm assuming it used to say XRP for anybody who does use Coinbase. Uh, and to confirm that, please do put it down in the comment section. Armando down here also noticing the same. Same here. Uh, that's new. Never saw this before. Last time is uh, it didn't have anything. Is something about to happen? So also just noticing trading not yet available on his platform there. It really does beg the question. And, uh, you know, now that Coinbase is in hot water with the SEC, are they realizing that, you know, Maybe they don't respect the SEC, kind of like how Ripple doesn't respect the SEC, and of course, famously, Elon Musk, he doesn't respect the SEC either. But I mean, maybe they know something. Maybe they know that there is going to be a verdict that we'll learn about soon, and so, uh, you know, this whole thing of uh, is Coinbase relisting, the murmurings, the hints that we're getting, uh, and I did a recent video about that, guys. I'll link it up here if you guys didn't catch that. Interesting time to be in crypto for sure. Uh, and then there's this, guys, halfway across the world. This is what's happening in South Korea. South Korea braces for two-thirds of their crypto to exchanges to shut down by the end of September. This also has to do with regulatory clarity in that region of the world. So South Korea's Financial Services Commission has set a deadline for overseas and local crypto exchanges to register as legal trading platforms. While the country aims to tighten regulations on the digital asset sector, nearly two thirds of all exchanges are expected to shut down. $2.6 billion in crypto will be wiped out. South Korea's financial regulators set a deadline for foreign and local crypto exchanges to register as legal trading platforms by the end of September. However, most local exchanges are struggling to meet the conditions set out by the regulator. This could result in nearly 40 crypto exchanges being shut down by September 24th. So for those of you guys who are located in South Korea or perhaps use a South Korean exchange, currently the country's crypto trading industry is dominated by four major exchanges, Upbit, BitThumb, Corbit, and Coin1. These platforms account for over 90% of the country's total digital asset trading volume. Uh, and according to Kim Hyung Jung, uh, a professor and head of cryptocurrency research at Korea University, smaller exchanges could uh, could potentially be shut down and could put the end to kimchi coins. These are alternative digital assets that are listed on local crypto exchanges and mostly traded in the country's native currency, the Korean won. So if you guys are on one of those smaller exchanges, I uh, do advise you to uh, likely have a backup plan, have another cryptocurrency exchange that you can hop on. Of course, uh, I recently uh, got onto the BitTrue exchange. I do have an affiliate link down there in the description of the video if you guys are interested in uh, in signing up for a potential other option for a uh, for a cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, you can use my affiliate link. You don't have to. Uh, I just thought I would mention it because we are seeing this now and uh, you know it's getting scary considering that uh, the Bitcoin bull run the cryptocurrency market is indeed in full swing here's bitcoin on the daily i mean we have seen uh, some depressed prices as of late bitcoin right now uh, at least as of the recording of this video trading just shy of forty six thousand dollars but we did see bitcoin go as high as 65 almost sixty five thousand dollars and uh, you know a lot of us are assuming there is going to be this final leg up for bitcoin you know, all time high. Okay, maybe not that high, but all time high, you know, topping in anywhere between 70 and $80,000 per BTC. Final leg up. 
before that crash all the way back down another correction potentially 80 85 90 percent so people are getting ready and uh, you know this is going to be their opportunity to cash out and so you know if some of these crypto exchanges are closing down uh, and this is just South Korea we did hear recently that Binance is closing down in certain areas of the world just uh, because of non-compliance with their uh, with their regulations so have a backup have a second backup a third backup a fourth backup it certainly does not hurt we've also got this news guys with regards to Algorand apparently eMoney announces integration with the Algorand blockchain to accelerate the circulation of European stablecoins so eMoney today announced that it was integrating with Algorand to support a range of fully backed European stablecoins across the Algorand ecosystem and these will include the e-euro the e-chf the e-n-o-k e-s-e-k and e-d-k-k stablecoins digital currency designed to maintain stable value by being linked to a fiat currency or other exchange traded commodity uh, and so this has grown substantially in popularity of course stable coins are a way for us to get out of our cryptocurrency profits and kind of secure our profits in a uh, in a stable asset of course this is what fiat currency is supposed to be stable enough uh, so that we are uh, you know so that we are protected from that high volatility when the market goes up and down and up and down this integration will enable faster time to market for applications built on Algorand, looking to offer native currency options uh, to users throughout Europe and drive adoption of Algorand-based applications among European users given currency familiarity. In addition to being available for purchase directly from eMoney, these Algorand-compliant European stablecoin offerings will be listed on several decentralized exchanges in the coming days, further increasing the supply in circulation. So uh, this being uh, developed on the Algorand blockchain, Great news there, more uh, compliant stable coins in, uh, in different parts of Europe. Uh, of course, the SEK is the uh, Swedish Krona. I'm not sure about these other ones. Well, obviously there's the Euro, the Swiss Franc, uh, the Norwegian Krona, I believe, uh, Swedish Krona, and maybe this is the Danish, uh, the Danish fiat currency, DKK, if I'm not mistaken. Nevertheless, uh, more integration for uh, the Algorand blockchain. So uh, that ecosystem growing as well. Kudos to Algorand hodlers out there. Also another one, guys, for VeChain hodlers, Aqua culture technology firm Blue Aqua. They're planning to bring blockchain traceability to the shrimp farming industry after forming a partnership with VeChain. So big news here, guys, for VeChain hodlers as well. Integrated business ecosystem across the aquaculture supply chain works as a perfect starting point for the implementation of a traceability system for seafood source quality and sustainability for the farming operations. And uh, I believe VeChain was also partnered with another seafood company as well. Uh, powered by VeChain Toolchain, the platform will be built to provide full traceability of farmed seafood data from the source of shrimp post larvae to feed or feed used culture period farming methodology and farming times will be tracked and available from the point of inception to the point of consumption and this is exactly what we need for our food obviously traceability in food very very important and so uh, you know a lot of the times I mean I, I'm finding at least myself more and more I'm going into the grocery store and wondering where the heck is this food coming from I feel like um, you know back in the day it used to be more transparent and these days you know th they can get away with putting so much on the label without us knowing and uh, I know this channel is not about that necessarily but I do question it and so uh, you know to be able to have that traceability to keep everybody on the supply chain honest I think is going to be a good thing a positive thing worldwide for everybody involved and uh, VeChain at the center of this operation of course VeChain another one of those cryptocurrencies that is really going to change the way we do things uh, in terms of supply chain management so great news there Wanted to mention that DJ Peter Vass also mentioning this partnership guys from ACI worldwide this partnership guys including ACI worldwide real-time payments and so just real quickly from back in October of 2019 as you guys can see here you can see ACI worldwide did deploy ripple solution so these guys are a ripple partner and a leading global provider of real-time payments and digital payment software solutions today they announced that MDT innovations SDN BHD has strengthened its payment capabilities with ACI enterprise payment platform uh, fave Southeast Asia's smart payments app is the first customer to go live with the new solution rolling out fave pay do it 
Eat Now and QR at 20,000 restaurants and retailers throughout Malaysia. Uh, with ACI Enterprise Payment Platform, or MDTI, uh, they've modernized its payment technology and offers uh, customers new ways to leverage e-wallet payments via real-time payment rails, delivering the benefit of instant payments as real-time adoption accelerates globally. ACI simplifies payments and provides flexibility by facilitating cost-effective connections to banks, real-time payment schemes, and alternative payment methods. So now Fave, uh, integrated with ACI, and uh, ACI we know uh, from a couple of years back, they are indeed a Ripple partner. So uh, again, with the tertiary relationships, seeing these big Ripple partners now move on to partner up with smaller companies and uh, the flywheel effect, right? The network effect. This is how the network is going to have value. And this is how price appreciation is going to happen uh, for XRP, that cryptocurrency uh, that is going to be actually used to solve problems. I wanted to also mention this uh, this next development, guys. Another one on the Algorand blockchain. This has to do with Wire to enable simple payment solutions and accelerate DeFi growth on Algorand. So Wire is another company, a leading fiat to crypto and payment infrastructure company. Today, they announced the upcoming availability of simple payment solution integrations for projects across the Algorand ecosystem. So Algorand really hitting it out of the park. And, uh, you know, we, we saw Algo really take off over the last little while. Right now it is kind of forming what is uh, looking like a bullish pennant pattern, actually trending upward. Uh, just as a side note here, so Algorand, of course, hit this peak, forming a bullish pennant, but a, but an ascending triangle on top of it all. So you guys can see the, the triangle isn't actually formed like this. It's more of an ascending triangle, so moving upward like that. And so Algorand, perhaps there have been some trading from investors in the know and uh, realizing how much this is really going to change the world. Well, via this partnership, developers building on the Algorand blockchain will be able to quickly and easily develop or rather deploy any of Wire's robust and simple to integrate APIs, allowing projects like the decentralized financial applications and tokenized marketplaces Algorand was purpose built for to integrate payment solutions in hours instead of months. So uh, the acceleration of integrating these payment solutions is obviously uh, probably one of those points that customers are saying, hey, this is great. We don't even have to wait for this. Beginning next month, developers on Algorand will have seamless access to Wire's checkout and card processing APIs, which allows end users to transact in Algorand supported currencies, uh, including the native Algo token, uh, as well as USDT and USDC. Swap API, which enables users to swap other currencies or crypto currencies into Algorand's native currency and savings API, which offers users the ability to earn yield on their Algorand assets. Further, Wire will make Algorand assets available across all current and future checkout API deployments, uh, enabling anyone in any ecosystem to purchase them quickly and easily with a debit card and via ACH, creating vast exposure for Algorand to new networks of users. So this is where it's at, right? Expanding, uh, you know, other payment networks to be able to integrate uh, seamlessly connection accelerating the uh, the speed at which these uh, these blockchains can integrate as well all very beneficial you know especially in this new world of course where uh, you know the economy changing a global economy purchasing online checkout delivered right to your door it's a new frontier of finance guys and uh, I'm happy that I'm in cryptocurrency. I'm happy that I got in it at the beginning. I'm very excited to see appreciation in my investments and uh, I'm sure you guys are all thinking the same thing. I'm gonna keep going guys. This from James Rule XRP here on Twitter and it has to do with DBS Digital Exchange now. Apparently they are, uh, they are a partner with Swift and what they're doing is they're offering cross-border payment tracking which I find ridiculous considering they can do this on the XRPL uh, essentially at the same time. So in conjunction with Swift Global Payment Innovation, uh, DBS Bank, they're offering up to the minute online tracking for cross-border payments. And uh, this is what the company announced in a press release yesterday. In all, roughly 4,000 corporate and small business customers in India, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Indonesia, and Vietnam are expected to benefit from this new edition, which features improved cash projections as well as receivables forecasting. And here's what Kieran Shetty here uh, said. Uh, he is the head of SWIFT of India and Southeast Asia. The globalization of economies has uh, meant a pressing need amongst corporates operating across jurisdictions, time zones, and currencies for full and real-time visibility of their international payments. 
Uh, driven by Swift GPI, the new inbound tracking service by DBS Bank allows corporates to see when a payment is on its way and when it is arriving at the beneficiary, which in turn reduces operational costs and frictions. Uh, you know, hilarious considering what Swift GPI really is a Ferrari shell over a Ford Model T engine. Uh, basically, you know, just kind of a new shiny outer shell to the same old technology that uh, doesn't actually solve any problems. You know, when you compare it to what Ripple is doing with XRP, real-time settlement at a fraction of the cost, super fast. Um, why would a company like this do this? And uh, the only reason I can think of, legacy technology, um, and we still don't have that regulatory clarity globally. I think that this is really going to open up once we do see regulatory clarity globally. I, I know we do have regulatory clarity in some parts of the world. Uh, and, you know, considering DBS Bank uh, all the way back in August of 2019, they said that there is a cryptocurrency that is better than SWIFT. And uh, they even mentioned Ripple. Fintechs are also looking to disrupt cross-border payments. Most fintech solutions currently available are in the retail space and tend to focus on reducing foreign exchange spreads. The bank on their website said Ripple is an example of a fintech looking to disrupt correspondent banking for cross-border payments at the commercial scale. They did say that Ripple and XRP do have the capability to disrupt the banking sector. However, um, they do not, I don't think that they actually said that they are using XRP, well, especially not back in 2019, not using XRP, but uh, I do believe they are a Ripple partner. Now, if I am mistaken on that fact, please do put it down in the comments section. I do believe though uh, that I have heard that DBS Bank is indeed a Ripple partner, not using XRP right now, clearly uh, still on this old SWIFT system, but I think that that could change, boom, like that once we get the regulatory clarity. I don't think these guys are stupid. I think these guys realize the potential, what needs to happen, especially in this changing economy. You know, sourcing that liquidity is going to be very important, especially, especially if we are facing a financial crisis, guys, which sounds like we are going to be facing. Now, I did a video recently, and in that video, I demonstrated what was happening with the S&P 500 today. Now, guys, this all ties together. The crypto industry, the S&P, the housing market, and even global markets around the world like in China. Let me throw a Fibonacci extension here on the S&P 500 for you guys and uh, I'm just going to show you guys that's where it links up from the last major crash we had, okay? Taking the top of the last bull run down to the trough of the bear market. So we're talking about uh, October 2007 all the way down to about March 2009. From there, the S&P 500 just skyrocketed and guys, look at where we are today. Right at the top here, the full Fibonacci extension, the 4.236 on the S&P 500. I would be worried, very worried if you have money in stocks, but by extension, it's not just stocks that we should be worrying about. And so I wanted to bring you guys this epic tweet thread from Adam Cochran here, okay? This has to do with Evergrande real estate, okay? Uh, and so I think there's a typo here because it's Evergrande real estate and other Chinese developer stocks dropping off a cliff in the Hong Kong morning session today. Here's what you need to know about why Chinese real estate may impact crypto and even US markets. Now follow with me now, guys. Evergrande is a major Chinese real estate developer who uh, through leveraged properties and issuing US denominated junk bonds built up a real estate empire, making it the second biggest in the country. Assets and equities boomed over the past decade, but net income struggled. The reason is debated, but it seems as though uh, they were over leveraging properties that were getting very little actual revenue to grow their empire. This worked right up until the pandemic, really began to hurt a few commercial and tourism properties that were actually driving revenue for them. It's estimated that they've now managed to rack up more than $300 billion USD in debt. So to put that into perspective, $300 billion is the entire GDP of countries like Ireland, Denmark, Hong Kong, and Portugal. And that is just the debt that Evergrande has. Currently, rumors are swirling that Evergrande may not even have enough remaining capital to service the interest payments on their loans, never mind paying down their principals. Now, the real estate developer claims they are going to liquidate property to get operations back on track. But those of us in crypto understand how liquidations work. So guys, think of this for a second. A huge real estate company now looking to liquidate. If you are liquidating because your collateral assets or real estate properties have sunk in value, and you have to sell that asset to pay back, then every time you sell it, the asset drops even further. 
Evergrande is so large that they will uh, that it will be a race to the bottom and they'll be selling properties which will lower the average price of properties in the region, thus lowering their asset value and entering into a spiral. Evergrande currently owns a whopping 2% of all Chinese real estate and so this has led Chinese issued bonds from nearly all real estate developers to sink. Now guys, I know what you're thinking. This is happening in China. It's real estate. How does that affect us over here? Well, pay attention guys. I'm going to get to that point, but Evergrande itself has been diving off a cliff all year and has reached a critical point. Now creditors are unwilling to accept their bonds and demanding payment made and aggressive restructuring options are being reviewed. So why should you care? Well, on September 15th, 2008, Lehman Brothers collapsed, dissolving $600 billion in U.S. assets, leading us to the worst market crash since the Great Depression. $600 billion in assets. Right now, Evergrande has $2 billion in assets and $3 billion in unserviced debt. $500 billion total. So it's entirely on the same level as the assets that Lehman Brothers had. But Lehman Brothers had a U.S. bank broadly diversified across many industries. Evergrande is not. So that is the main difference here. Evergrande is in one industry and one industry only. And its debt is held across banks, guys, in China, the US, the UK, Canada, and Australia. And uh, apparently there are some others there. So if you are listening from the United States, from Canada, from the UK, from Australia, uh, I would be paying attention to this, especially if you hold crypto. This also comes at a time when markets have been on an artificial inflation-driven quantitative easing fueled run-up like no other. So when the hammer drops, it will drop hard, guys. Bringing us back to this S&P 500, bringing us back to the lockdowns that we saw back in March of 2020, right? Markets collapsed. People were buying up stocks and everything else. Again, this is the S&P 500. Uh, and this is all artificial because we know the economy's crap. Yet for some reason, the S&P 500 keeps rallying and rallying and rallying. Okay, so back to this. So when the hammer drops, it will drop hard. But this is not only because defaults on bonds, but it will mean billions of dollars unpaid to Chinese contractors and goods suppliers, and it will mean the largest ever bulk real estate liquidation ever, if Evergrande goes under. That real estate collapse could mean the asset sheets of other real estate developers, banks, and mortgage companies in China would all crumble. Remember the big empty houses in the US in 2008? Well, think of that times 100. Then we have to remember that China owns 15% of all global debt. So what happens when they have an internal crisis? They are likely to start aggressively pursuing some of that external debt. So this is how it could affect other nations like the UK, the US, Canada, Australia, so on and so forth, which much of it is likely uh, with the same overseas banks and funds that own Evergrande bonds in the first place. Now, there is a chance that the CCP could step in and find a way to bail out or unwind Evergrande. With China's internal policies, though, it seems quite likely, although it will still likely be pennies on the dollar to bail them out. But if they don't, then market conditions are primed for a gosh darn meltdown. So we're basically relying on China. This is what Adam's saying here. We're basically relying on China to choose to bail out Evergrande. If they do not bail out Evergrande, we are in big caca, folks. We're sitting on a powder keg of weak economic involvement and yet all-time high stocks, huge inflation, and disconnected markets. Uh, the question of a large connection is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and how bad. That correction could be soon, it could be years from now, but it will happen. The longer it takes, the worse it gets. But there are unique events that could make it far, far worse and the collapse of Evergrande is certainly one of them. These shockwaves would be left in markets around the world, including crypto. While we can hope that crypto one day becomes a flight from the traditional uh, financial markets, right now it's sufficiently intertwined to its movement. So this is the point here that I think uh, we should all be paying attention to. We hope that uh, crypto, at least at this point, would not be intertwined with traditional markets, but alas, it still is. And so we are still vulnerable. We still have exposure to the traditional markets here. Uh, he, he goes on to say, plus there is a stark reality that this will have a huge impact on commercial paper markets. Regardless of what commercial paper you hold, bonds and commercial paper would take a hit and some issuers may even fold. 
Currently, both Tether and Circle hold commercial papers, and while I think it is unlikely that either would have large swaths of Evergrande bonds, the whole market will reel a bit. For what it's worth, I do think both of those will still have uh, more than enough wiggle room to prevent any actual meltdown, but if we have a meltdown that gets really bad, they certainly could get a bit off peg. If either Tether or USDC did melt down in a global collapse, though, it'd actually be bullish for crypto. Now, think of it this way, guys. As if you couldn't use them to cash out, people would just start bulk converting them into BTC and ETH, regardless of price. So think of it for that, for, for, for a second there. If Tether and USDC, uh, if, if for some reason you could not cash out into those uh, stable coins, what we've traditionally looked to do, what people would do is they would pour their investments into some of the highest cryptocurrencies. I think, you know, some of the top 10 or top 20 in uh, in terms of market cap, uh, you know, mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum to hedge their bets to kind of uh, really kind of safeguard their investments. Of course, that would obviously push up Bitcoin and Ethereum price and uh, likely other cryptocurrencies that are high on the market cap list. He finalizes this tweet thread by saying, either way, Evergrande is a huge story that most Western media is entirely oblivious to. I hope they get to stay that way and never have a reason to learn their name, but there is a chance that we're currently staring down the barrel of the next financial meltdown. It all comes down to what the Chinese government will do and if the Chinese real estate market actually has enough demand to keep these assets afloat. But it's pretty damn dicey. Adam, I could not agree more. I never knew about Evergrande, and so you learn something new every day. Interesting to equate it to what Lehman Brothers, uh, to what happened to Lehman Brothers back in 2008. So guys, are we staring down the barrel of the next financial meltdown? Our economies have never been more integrated than now, and uh, you know, the Chinese economy has been on fire for a while. Could something so big affect the rest of the world? Kind of like how the mortgage crisis affected the world in 2008? And will our crypto be affected, or could it be that if investors do not want to dump their earnings into stable coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some of the other top cryptocurrencies will rally as a result? Two different schools of thought. Of course, it's a very interesting scenario to think about, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.